Hi guys, how are you doing today? Good. Hungry? Yeah. Tired? What time is our lunch break? In 10 minutes? <laughs> I'm going to be brief. I'll try it. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm grateful to uh, Mark for uh, this invitation. Um, when I received the invitation, I thought to myself, what the hell am I going to do there to entertain those smart, educated, and experienced people on cultural issues? After all, I'm I'm economist. I don't delve much into you know culture. Maybe maybe I should decline. And then I thought it twice, and I decided, okay, I'm going to go there and to tell them my own story. Um, I prepared the speech, but I'm, don't get frightened. I'm not going to torture you. <laughs> we are running out of time, and um, besides, why reading off? It's not that complicated. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the title of uh, my presentation, so I decided to tell you something uh, which goes back in history. I consider important to understand, you know, this uh, issue of why Germany is a um, respected, internationally respected country in terms of culture. I grew up in a remote and rather less developed country um, in a period of time which was totally Stalinist. And Stalinism was horrible. At that time, on the cultural front, uh, you know, uh, what prevailed was uh, a sort of a, um, you know, tooting the great Soviet um, victory over fascist Germany. So everything related to, to Germany was fascist, and it was, at, at, at the official level, a sort of something um, detrimental and bad. So that was just one part of the story. The other part of the story was, nevertheless, Germany was respected. Why? Um, you remember my predecessor, Andreas, ask a question, when you hear the word Germany, how do you perceive German culture? And somebody who was seated behind me, he's gone, he said, Mercedes. <laughs> um, and the same applied to that part of Germany that was within the Eastern Bloc at that time, and that was the so-called German Democratic Republic or East Germany or you name it. People in my rather less developed country perceived Germany and its culture, you know, based on what they knew about German goods. Scarcity, material scarcity in the Eastern Bloc at that time was everywhere. Almost every one of you, uh, you know, lives or has grown up in under affluent conditions right now. Everything is available, everything is there, and it's easy. That was not the case back then. Everything was scarce, everything. You, you have to, to stay in line for shoes, for shirts, for uh, whatever, for food, but especially for industrial goods. But the distribution of that scarcity was, uh, wasn't the same across the Eastern Bloc. In some countries, you know, the supply was better, and the, 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 you know, the, the, best, the best situation was in the former East Germany, and people knew that, number one. And number two, they knew the goods that are available there, they are of, of higher quality. So a, my, a countryman of myself, a Bulgarian, would prefer a German TV set instead to, to, to a Russian-made TV set or Soviet-made TV set because of the higher quality. And they related the, the higher quality to the cultural level of the Germans, of the East Germans, in spite of, 
all the negative propaganda and also of the negative experience because of the atrocities Germany committed during World War II, but somehow people were thinking, comparing, you know, the positive and the negative, and the, on balance they were considering Germany a positive example, and they felt they, they, they felt attracted to to German, you know, goods, but also to the German culture in the broadest sense of the word. Of the word, they knew, of course about Beethoven, so German music. They, they knew about Kant and Hegel and, and Marx, of course, in the first place, so German philosophy. Um, so the German culture was recognized. But what was even more recognized by, you know, by ordinary people was what they called the Germans are cultured. So they are well-mannered, they are educated, they are polite. You know, such things that were in a short supply at that time with the Bulgarian society, which used to be a very rural society, not just in Bulgaria. In, in, in many other countries of the Eastern Bloc, the situation was the same. So in spite of what happened during World War II, in spite that Germany was divided, and when we, when we said Germany, we had in mind just the Eastern part, the culture was there, and the culture was perceived not as a output by cultural institutions or by cultural infrastructure. We, we did have a ministry of culture, a committee uh, for culture at, at the state level. We had similar things at the lower, uh, local levels or regional levels and so on and so on, but people didn't care much about that. They cared about Okay, not Mercedes, but, but about other German items and goods that were available or were possibly available, and they knew they are good. And also they knew when they, when they traveled to Berlin, Leipzig, or Dresden, they would go not just to certain museums. In Dresden, they used to go usually to the Zwinger Museum. But they would also rush into the... Uh, into the department stores and try to, to get some items and things uh, that weren't available uh, in, in my own country at that time or in their own countries. Uh, and that was the way East Germany conveyed its culture. It was, it was a sort of a grassroots, you know, uh, approach, but it was successful. So in times of division and in, in times of... Um, uh, you know, ideological clash, Germany was there, at least the eastern part for the eastern part of Europe. Of course, we knew there is another Germany as well, West Germany, but uh, it was beyond reach b because it was um, behind the Iron Curtain. So my point is, and I'm going to finish this with, uh, uh, here with this, uh, it's not about institutions, it's not about, uh, you know, uh, bureaucracies. It's about the culture of a nation, how attractive this culture might be. And because I guess a few of uh, a few are from the United States, what I'm, what I'm comparing here, you know, between my own country of birth, Bulgaria, uh, and East Germany, the same was felt by East Germans when it came to the West. There's a funny... Um, example on that. Um, in the former East Germany, um, a book writer called Günther Kunert was allowed to travel to the United States. That was in the, that was, um, uh, you know, sort of a spectacular event. It was in the 70s. Uh, so they allowed him to go there and he went there and he returned and wrote a book and uh, the book was entitled The Other Planet. So to an East German, you know, cut off the West, uh, the United States was, a, was another planet. So this book was very quickly um, uh, sought off. But um, one thing I remember, he was saying the same, uh, or he was making the same observation. He was asking himself, because he was an intellectual, why is the culture of the United States so popular across the world? 
And he came to the conclusion, not because they do have a Ministry of Culture or a Department of Culture in Washington, D.C. or whatever, but because some grassroots ideas, they start to grow, they form a trend, it is, and this trend is going to capture the entire world. world. So this is the way how a country may, may become, in cultural sense, popular or maybe not. Fortunately, Germany belongs to that club of countries that are recognized as culturally advanced and also um, that, that are appreciated. Now we have a united Germany right now. Uh, Germany is a very respected member of the international society, of the international community. In economic terms, it is the undisputed leader of Europe, and if you have questions on the economy or on the euro, on the, on the crisis, I can tell you a lot uh, uh, on that. But also in terms of culture, Germany is back if, if it ever was not there, and I very much hope this trend is going to uh, continue. For Thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting. Could you please mention a little bit more things about this very interesting it's not the cultural department that ex spreads interesting culture to other countries, but grassroots ideas that catch fire, I guess you could say. How, could you speak a little bit further on that? Uh, I'm a layman. Uh, this is just my personal observation, and um, I, I tried to share with you my um, experience um, from the past. Uh, once again, um, at that time, the propaganda was uh, in favor of the former Soviet Union, and Germany was uh, sort of portrayed uh, like the, the bad guy. But um, in spite of that, uh, uh, at the unofficial level, people felt quite the opposite. They, they knew Germany is a cultured nation, and they respected it for that, and they didn't care much about ministries of culture or... or or, you know, a, a high level officials, whatever, um, they were looking at uh, what this country is offering to them. It was offering either material things they were coveting, or it was offering um, its level of, um, you know, um, civilization, behavior, good manners, uh, you know, politeness, and so on and so on. All things that this rather simple and rural, rural society at that time was leaking or was, um, you know, wishing to have uh, as well. Uh, and that's why this admiration and this uh, appreciation of uh, Germany at that time or of East Germany at that time. And uh, this is one of the explanations uh, how, uh, wh what is necessary for a national culture to spread around and uh, to become more popular beyond uh, their own um, uh, national borders. Uh, this is uh, my mm, observation as a, again, layman. Hello, thank you for your speech. Um, I have a question in relation to Russia. Maybe you can answer. How do you comment on um, the Russian Federation's recent efforts on increasing its cultural influence worldwide through uh, state financing of public institutions such as the um, TV channels and also organizing sporting event, events. Uh, once again, I can tell you just uh, my observations. Um, we, we have to separate. On the one hand, there is the great Russian culture, which is undisputed. This is Tolstoy, this is Tchaikovsky, this is Pushkin, this is uh, uh, Glinka, whatever. Uh, you know, you, the list is endless. So R Russian, the, the classical R Russian culture is um, uh, recognized beyond, uh, you know, doubt, and uh, it's there. Um, at the same time, um, we were observing, the, you know, during the last 25 years, uh, when you know the political changes in Eastern Europe and uh, in the former Soviet Union uh, started. Um, we, we uh, were observing a sort of a shift uh, of the in influences, um, so to the uh, you know detriment of um, the Soviet Union on the one hand, and to the advantage of say the United States. To put it very 
in a very simplified uh, way, on the other hand. So American culture uh, was, um, uh, uh, you know, pouring into, into the former Eastern, Eastern Bloc uh, almost um, uninhibited, um, and it was welcomed. Whereas, think of the Czechs, of the Poles, of the Hungarians, and many, many others in the former Eastern Bloc, they were turning more and more their, their um, uh, back um, on, 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 on uh, Russia and on its, um, uh, you know, uh, way of um, uh, uh, promoting its influence. They, they are not um, uh, disputing the classical, um, they don't dispute the classical Russian uh, culture, but they, uh, they simply, um, you know, d walked away of what um, the Soviet Union was trying to, at that time, to establish a sort of a, mm, a soft power or influence uh, of, uh, you know, the values of the former Soviet Union. This is a trend. Uh, it can be stopped by, um, in, uh, by uh, you know, in infrastructure and institutions like ministries of culture and whatever. It can be stopped even by such uh, uh, internationally popular events like uh, Olympic Games in Sochi or... Uh, you know, uh, soccer World Cup, uh, World Cup uh, coming up soon. Um, it has to be something else. Um, the soft power of a, a nation is uh, based on on values, on uh, uh, on things um, that other nations uh, accept, adopt um, uh, voluntarily. Uh, if they like it, they, they, they will, and, and then uh, that respective uh, country is going to, to be successful. Otherwise, it has to try something else or, or it has to accept, um, you know, to be of less, uh, you know, importance uh, around the world, maybe regionally, whatever. But uh, once again, um, this is um, the comment of a non-expert.